Good morning and welcome to 7 at 7. I'm Pastor Daniel and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Good morning. We're so glad you're here with us today. Hop in the comments. Let us know you're there. Let us know if you have any praise reports or prayer requests. We love to be praying with you or celebrating with you. I have a praise report from Loretta. She said that her friend Cindy's surgery went well. Thankful for the power of prayer. And that went right, instead of going to ICU, they were able to go straight to their room. So we are so grateful for that. Yes. So good. And, and remembering that God works. And a lot of times we get, he says, according to your faith. And it's so cool. As we're praying, people say, hey, pray that this surgery goes well. Pray that this goes well. Um, that they've gotten exactly what we prayed for. And sometimes when we pray for something that involves a doctor, sometimes we stop giving God credit. Yeah. But that's exactly what we prayed for. So it's just so cool seeing, seeing prayers getting answered. Um, I'm excited for the word today. We get to dive into it. Pastor brought up something on Sunday that had come up earlier in the week in a conversation. Uh, I was talking with, with a bunch of the young pastors here, and we were going through and talking about our culture and some of the way that the, the, our culture views things. And Pastor talked about how in culture, there is this glorification of tolerance, of each person getting their own truth, and the worst crime is the one who doesn't tolerate, so they don't tolerate them. I, it, it's confusing. It, it is a little bit confusing, but it becomes this, this thing where like you can't, if you have a firm opinion, I'm going to have view you as a villain. Yeah. Um, and, and they go through this going, well, whatever you feel, that should be truth for you. And this is, this is very much the mantra of society right now. And it comes out in tons of different movies. And it's just constantly being pushed as the narrative of, well, it's okay. And their, their desire makes it okay. And there are, our feelings determine who we are is really part of, um, of what culture is trying to, to say. But in Revelation 2.20, and the pastor went over this one, he said, uh, Jesus is, 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 there's a word from Jesus to the churches, and he goes through and he says, um, oh, sorry, that's the wrong verse, that's the wrong verse. Rome, uh, Revelation 2.20 says, I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching, seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. Jesus goes through and goes, my problem is what you tolerate. And a lot of times, our world is saying the opposite, going, hey, you're, you're wrong if you don't approve of everything. And he goes, no, no. If you approve of everything, you're wrong. In Romans chapter 14, verse 22, it says, Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. And I just, that spoke so loudly to me that just because I approve it doesn't make it right. Yeah. And, and that's where our, our culture so gets into, but, and, and they want to go, well, we justified it, so it's okay. And he goes, it doesn't matter what culture approves of. It doesn't matter even what I approve of. He goes, blessed are you if you don't get judged, if you don't have to pass judgment because of what you approved. Yeah. And it, it's just this, this huge thing. And, and so often we're going, but doesn't my desire make it okay? And it's just, it doesn't. In James chapter 1, it says that each person is tempted when he's lured or enticed by his own desire. Then when desire it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and when sin is fully grown, it brings forth death. And he starts this like, hey, you're going to have to put these desires in check. Because your desires will be wrong. Your desires will bring temptation. And we are told over and over to put to death what's earthly. And it goes these these different desires that's in us. I mean, that's Colossians 3, 5. Um, and it talks in James 4, verse 1, about some of these desires being at war inside of us. Yeah. And recognizing that that's part of the Christian walk, is going, I don't live according to the desires of the flesh. Yeah. When he says to put to death the works of the flesh, or that I need to pick up my cross daily, that means I get to put to death and to die to the, the ways of self. Right. In, do you have anything before I go to Romans? That's great. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. 
he goes through and says, do you not know that the ones that you present yourselves to obey, you make your master? And this is where our culture has said, my desires define me and they, they define what's okay. So they have taken their desires and placed them as God instead of submitting them to God. And, and you'll often hear in like churchy settings, they're like, but doesn't God want me happy? Yeah, you're, that sounds good, but it's just not biblical. And like, you've got the wrong definition of, of, of happy. And when I place my happiness um, or my getting my way as the supreme measurement of what I should or shouldn't do, I have said my happiness is my God. My getting my way is my God. Instead of going, all right, God, I submit my way to you. And I'm going to find my happiness from you from doing your will. Yeah. Which is such a powerful thing. And it's just such a counter-cultural message. But it is the message of the kingdom. Yeah. And it's something that we get to do and we get to live. Yeah. Well, it's time for our confession. So say these out loud with me, okay? I cast my cares on God. I cast my cares on God. Because he cares for me. Because he cares for me. I choose prayer instead of fear. I choose prayer instead of fear. I bring my request with thanksgiving. I bring my request with thanksgiving. And God fills me with his peace. And God fills me with his peace. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I am more than a conqueror through him. I am more than a conqueror through him. God is my healer and redeemer. God is my healer and redeemer. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful and effective. My prayers are powerful and effective. God, I thank you that we can have powerful and effective prayers, that we can partner with you to see your will done. And God, I ask that you would give us your desires, that we would have a heart that set, is set on honoring you. Yes. And God, that it would direct us, that it would shine through in our homes, in our workplace, God, in, our, in the restaurants we go to, everywhere that we go, God, that we would shine for you and that we would uh, boldly stand up for what's right, and walking in love to honor you in all that we say and do. And we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow. Be blessed, and we'll see you then.